Take a look. It is a tweet from President Trump this morning. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And today's new unemployment, uh, new employment numbers certainly justify the all caps treatment. Falling unemployment, a 50 year low, strong job creation, very impressive results almost across the board. Strong enough for the president to stay on message about it for a good four hours or so, which gets us to our big story tonight. Not for what it says about the president's message discipline, but what it says about more substantive matters. Because today, the President of the United States had the opportunity to confront Russian President Vladimir Putin over his interference in the 2016 presidential election and warn him not to do it again. Armed with the findings in Robert Mueller's report and free from any immediate criminal liability for his own actions during the campaign or the investigation, he might have finally been free to signal to his Russian counterpart that the question of foreign attacks on American democracy is not personal and not partisan. Perhaps he'd finally be able to tell him that any current or future attacks will not be tolerated ever. He had the chance to do that today when the two leaders spoke by phone, but apparently he didn't. And keeping him honest, he was asked about it this afternoon. Did you address the election meddling issues that came up in the Mueller report with Mr. Putin today? Well, we discussed it. He actually uh, sort of smiled when he said uh, something to the effect that it started off as a mountain and it ended up being a mouse. But he knew that because he knew there was no collusion whatsoever. Uh, so uh, pretty much that's what it was. I mean, it almost sounds there like President Trump is still more concerned about denying his own culpability than addressing Vladimir Putin's. Anyway, it's good he got a second chance to answer the question. Did you tell him not to meddle, Mr. President? Did you tell him not to meddle in the next election? Excuse me. I'm talking. I'm answering this question. You are very rude. Uh, so we had a good conversation about many different things, okay? Did you, did you tell him not, not to, meddle? to meddle in the next election? Uh, we didn't discuss that. Really, we didn't discuss it. We so, no talk from the Commander-in-Chief on today's call warning the leader of our main nuclear adversary not to do it again. Plenty of talk about how unfair this all is to him. I was totally transparent because I knew I did nothing wrong. It turned out I did nothing wrong. No collusion with Russia. Think of it. $35 million they spent, they wasted, over a period of two years. No collusion, no obstruction. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. They actually clawed back tens of millions of dollars from Paul Manafort. His final words on the subject today, by contrast, here are some of Robert Mueller's first words on it. Quoting now from the introduction to volume one of his report, the Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping and systematic fashion. Also, the campaign expected it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts. Now, despite that, the report goes on to say, and I'm quoting again, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. However, it did detail numerous efforts by the Russians to interfere in the election, some with the public encouragement of the campaign or of uh, President Trump himself. And of course, in volume two, the Mueller team lays out a laundry list of potential obstruction of justice without either indicting or exonerating the president. So as to the president's own behavior, the report is at the very least unflattering, in some rep respects inconclusive. As to Russia's actions, though, could not be clear. Russia hit this country with a sweeping and systematic targeted disinformation and deception campaign. And that's the bottom line. And it hasn't stopped. Despite public statements by the Kremlin to the contrary, we continue to see individuals affiliated with the St. Petersburg-based Internet Research Agency creating new social media accounts, masquerading as Americans, and then using these accounts to draw attention to divisive issues. Well, that's Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats last July, the same day, July 13th, that Special Counsel Mueller charged 12 officers of Russian military intelligence, the GRU, with committing, quote, large-scale cyber operations to interfere with the 2016 U.S. presidential election. So just three days after that, the president met with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki, armed with his DNI's assessment, the Mueller indictment, and far more, if he wanted to use it. I think you know the answer. He did not. Instead, with the perpetrator standing by his side, he sided with the perpetrator. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today.
Well, fast forward to today, it's impossible to gauge the strength of Vladimir Putin's denial, this time because this time apparently none was needed. You only need a denial when the other guy makes an accusation, and clearly the president offered none. So, yet again, as it was during the campaign, as it was in Helsinki, as it's been all along, President Trump simply cannot bring himself to confront Vladimir Putin about this. Perspective now from someone who's watched this all play out as it happened from the inside. CNN national security analyst James Clapper was director of national intelligence at the time. He served presidents in both parties for decades and is the author of Facts and Fears, Hard Truths from a Life in Intelligence. George Clapper, the president says that, that he and Vladimir Putin did not talk about the sweeping Russian cyber attack in the 2016 election that Mueller has detailed. I mean, the president's correct when he says Mueller determined there was no conspiracy with the Trump campaign, but it doesn't make what the Russians did any less real. Um, are you surprised at all that it just doesn't come up between these two? No, I'm not, Anderson, unfortunately, because uh, when you think about it, both of them are in a state of denial uh, about the Russian meddling. Uh, obviously, Putin will continue to deny that uh, there was any Russian meddling, so he's in his reality world. And, of course, President Trump, does not want to acknowledge it because when he does, in his mind, I think, it casts doubt on the legitimacy of his election. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that they're, they're just not going to bring it up. I mean, even if the president, you know, doesn't want to talk about the 2016 interference because he thinks it, it is somehow a threat to his, uh, to, to the validity of his actual election, the, the whole idea of what's going to happen in the next election, and frankly, every election after that, I mean, the president's own intelligence community says this is an ongoing threat to American democracy. Yeah, and, you know, I find it somewhat ironic that people in the Trump administration criticize uh, the Obama administration for not doing anything. Uh, yet, uh, here we are, as we're approaching uh, 2020, and there's an ideal opportunity for, the, for President Trump to make clear once again, that the, you know, don't meddle in our uh, political processes. And you're right, you know, if we don't do that, then of course this just, in the Russians' mind, gives them license uh, even more to push the envelope and to, to interfere in 2020. To that point about the Obama administration, Sir Sanders said, quote, this administration, unlike the previous one, takes election meddling seriously, and we're going to do everything that we can to prevent it from happening. A, what do you make of their characterization of, of the Obama administration's reaction? And also, the president doesn't seem to be holding high-level meetings or cabinet-level discussions on a routine basis, or if at all, about Russian meddling. Well, for point one is the Obama, just for the record, the Obama administration did take uh, Russian meddling very seriously and did, mm. did things about it. For one, uh, President Obama did directly confront uh, Putin about it and didn't ask him, hey, are you interfering in our election? Um, and uh, there is, there is a, a, an element missing here, in my view, is the void of, that can only be filled by the, the unique bully pulpit that only the president occupies to galvanize the country, the voters, about what the Russians are up to and what they might do. And I would just hope we'd pay more attention to volume one of the Mueller report, which documented in exhaustive detail something that, looking back, we just kind of scratched the surface of in January 17 about the Russian meddling. It, that is the big deal here. And if you want to, you know, who's, who's the winner in all this? Vladimir Putin. It is a, sort of interesting when you look back o over the last two years of the, the Trump administration, the president has never really, you know, made a speech to the American public about what happened and about how they're going to prevent it from ever happening again, you would think that's the kind of thing there would at least be one speech to the nation about, as, oppo as opposed to every public comment he's made is essentially undercutting the idea that it, it might even be Russia. Well, exactly. And, of course, uh, taking uh, Putin's uh, phony assurance that there was no meddling over that the word of his own intelligence community, and I say his own intelligence community, not the prior one. Um, and, you know, that it leaves doubt, I think, in the minds of many Americans, and it encourages the Russians to do more. It, no surprise the president is seized upon this New York Times reporting that we discussed last night. I'm curious your take, the Times detailing how the FBI sent what they call an, uh, an investigator, an undercover investigator, to meet with George Papadopoulos in London as part of its counterintelligence inquiry into the Trump campaign and Russia. 
The president is suggesting that it was inappropriate or, or nefarious. How, how do you see it? Well, this is a uh, standard investiga investigatory technique that the FBI uses. They use it in counterterrorism uh, uh, investigations. And it, it has been under the use of undercover uh, officers, undercover agents, that has led to the rolling up of uh, and thwarting of terrorist plots uh, in this country. And, and it's a, a legitimate technique. The narrative, obviously, is spying on the campaign. No, it was trying to understand what the Russians were doing. And uh, you know, the FBI has very, uh, you know, strict protocols for the use of undercover agents, and I, I, I'm sure that was the case here. Director Clapper, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Anderson.